So your property is a logarithm, guys. So we talked a little bit of value about evaluating logarithms. But the properties of logarithms are just ways for you to rearrange things, put things in order. Um, just ways of rearranging an expression so that it works for you and you can eliminate things. So if you're looking at this, since we know how to evaluate things, we can understand that if you see that first property log base b of 1 equals 0, you know that anything to the 0 power is going to equal 1. So that's why we can say anything to that power of 0 is going to equal 1. So if your argument is 1, it doesn't matter what the base is, your expression equals 0. For the third one, if you have log base b of b to the x, so if the base of the big part, the base of your argument, is the same as the base of your log, then those cancel, and you're left with just that exponent. You're left with x. So log base b, number 5 there, it says log base b of m to the n. So there it's saying that when you are multiplying, to expand, you're going to add. Or vice versa, if you have two log terms being added, when you go to condense them, you're going to make them a product or multiply. So if when we have a product, we add, then when we have a quotient, we subtract. And on your seventh property there, it says log base b of m to the n power. What happens is this power of n goes out to the front of your log expression. So we pull that out to the front, and then it becomes n times your expression log base b of m. And just like your first rule, so the first rule, it says anything to the zero power is always one. So we always know if our argument's one, it's zero. Well, if you have the same base of your argument, or I'm sorry, the same base of your log, that is equal to your argument or the big part. Well, say you had log base six of six. Six to what power is going to get you six? One. So if your argument and the base of your log are the same, it has to be to the first power. And then number four, it says if you have a base of an exponent, that's b, and the base of your log that's in an exponent are the same, they cancel each other out. And then you're left with just that exponent. So I do want to mention two more properties or just two more facts here to your chart um, that Euler base to that base e that we had talked about, the natural log and base e are inverses of each other. So what that means for you guys is when you're working with this, if you have a base of natural log and an exponent of e, or a base of e and an exponent of ln, they are going to cancel each other. So say you had e to the ln of 2, e and ln are inverses, they undo each other, and you would be left with just 2. Or say you had ln of e to the power of 2x, so the base is ln, your exponent is e with the power of 2x. Your natural log as your base, your e as your exponent would cancel, and this would equal 2x. So also just keep that in mind, guys, that they undo each other because the natural log and the base e are inverses of one another. Now let's go ahead and try simplifying some of these. So for your first one, guys, this is where we said any time you have a base or an argument of 1, I'm sorry, if your argument is 1, so the big part is 1, 
your base is 15. So 15 to what power equals 1? Well, anything to this value equals 1, and that's where our property came in, it's going to be 0. So that first expression equals 0. So what about number 2? Well, this is where chapter 3 comes into handy as far as being able to rewrite things between radical and exponential form, guys. So if we try to write 27 with an exponent, um, can we write 27 with a smaller base? Yes. So this becomes log base 3. And I'm going to rewrite 27 as 3 cubed. So you guys know that when you can't see that index, it's a really an index of 2. So I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form, and I'm going to make it log base 3 of 3 to the 3 halves. So what happens when the argument and the base of your log are the same? They cancel each other out, and this expression equals 3 halves. So number three, ln of e to the 16. So because e is the base of your, or the argument of your natural log, they undo each other. And you're left with just 16. Number four. 5 to the exponent, so the exponent, the whole log base 5 of 12 is the entire exponent. So, log base 5 of 12, our property says that when the base of our log, or the base of our exponent and the base of our log are the same, they cancel out, and you're left with just 12. So that expression equals 12. So number five, remember we said, guys, um, every expression, has, if you don't see a power, you know that it's a power of one. If you don't see the index in a radical, you know it's a power of two. Same thing with the logs. We normally work with log base tens because our place values are tens. But if you don't see a base there, you have to understand and know, okay, that's really log base ten. And then our argument is 10 to the power of x minus 2. So now the base of our log and that argument, or the base of that exponent of the argument, are the same. They cancel. So this whole expression would equal x minus 2. Number 6, e to the power of ln to the 4x. Same idea, remember, E and LN undo each other. Inverses of one another. So, E, LN cancel, you're left with 4X. Now, the next one we have is 8 to the power of, so that log is the entire exponent. So, 8 to the power of 3 log base 8 of 4. So our property says that the number, that 3, that coefficient out in front of the log becomes the exponent. So this is going to become eight to the exponent of log base 4 or 8 still, I'm sorry to the 4 thirds. So now, because the exponent, or the base of that exponent is 8, and the exponent has a log with base 8, they're going to cancel, and we're going to be left with 4 to the third power, which is 64. And then lastly, we have e to the power of 4 ln of 2. So, again, that 4 becomes the exponent, so this becomes ln of 2 to the 4th. 
our base of e and our natural log in the exponent cancel, and we're left with just 2 to the 4th power, which is 16.